Now we're going to go over the SIU Respiration vis Visual Quiz. And this is just a visual representation of what's occurring during cellular respiration. We have our three stages going on here. Change my cover so it'll show up better. So our first stage here, right here, this is glycolysis, glucose is being lysed or broken. Glucose has been broken down into two molecules of pretty gases. We have six carbons here, split it in the middle. We get two, three carbon sugars. Those are pretty acid. And this is glycolysis. It's happening in the cytoplasm as the glucose is approaching the mitochondria there. So this is glycolysis. It's taking place in the cytoplasm. And we make some, use some, and come out with a grand total of about 2 ATP from glycolysis. And as those pruvic acids move into the mitochondria, they go into what's known as the Krebs cycle. And it's going to turn all the process all the way through two times because there's two molecules of pruvic acid coming in. It's going to create citric acid. Sometimes it's called the citric acid cycle because citric acid is produced. It is also going to produce the byproduct or waste product, carbon dioxide, as carbons are being broken off of those pruvic acids. So carbon dioxide will go out as a waste product. And this is Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle sometimes. And that takes place inside the mitochondria, the mighty mitochondria, main site of ATP production, site of cellular respiration, powerhouse of the cell, site of ATP production. In this case, we're making some, using some, and come out again with a grand total of about 2 ATP. And from the Krebs cycle, we move into the, well, the membrane here of the mitochondria. It's going to be the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain, we have high energy electrons moving along there. As it says, electron transport chain, there are a whole bunch of processes. We have oxygen going in. We need oxygen here that's moving in those high energy electrons. It's going to, those oxygens are going to attach some to hydrogens coming off in there, and that's going to form H2O. Water will be given off here as a byproduct of the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain is taking place in the mitochondria as well. And Depending on the efficiency of the mitochondria there, it's going to produce about 34 to 36 ATP. 34 to 36. Give or take a couple, so about 34 to 36 ATP are going to be produced, depending on the efficiency of that cell at the time. So that's a grand total of about 38 or so um, ATPs from that one molecule of glucose that started the whole process. Number 10 says, what is the name of substance A, and what is this role in cellular respiration? Well, substance A is back up here. It's our six-carbon sugar that gets the whole thing started. That's glucose. It starts that whole process, and it is the source of the chemical energy. That will be converted to metabolic energy. And that metabolic energy is ATP. So glucose is a source of that chemical energy that will be converted to metabolic energy ATP. 
Number 11 says, what is the name of substance B? And what is this role in cellular respiration? Well, substance B, that was the carbon dioxide that's been given off as a waste product. It's taking those extra carbons out. Putting that carbon back into that carbon cycle. You cycle that carbon. So it is carbon dioxide. And it is given off as a waste product or a byproduct. Next number 12 says, what is the name of substance C? Well, substance C is going into the electron transport chain. And then it's kind of circling back out in substance C. Well, this is oxygen going in, carrying those high energy electrons, oxygen going in. It picks up some hydrogen while it's in there, forming H2O water, and that's what's going to come back out right here as another waste product of cellular respiration. So we have oxygen going in, and then H2O coming out, water coming out as a waste product. So substance C is the oxygen. Okay. Here carries says high energy electron or helps transport those high energy electrons. In parentheses, I'm going to put, fix up hydrogen to form water. And that substance D coming out there, that is the water. The water and it's being given off as a waste product. Number 14 says, What would occur if there was a sudden shortage of substance A within the cell? Well, first of all, if there's not glucose coming in, well, it's going to slow that. that um, cellular respiration down, less ATP will be being produced, but your body's still going to need, that cell is still going to need ATP, so it would switch from using glucose to using lipids. So it would switch over to using lipids. It's going to start burning fats. So if there's not enough glucose, the cell would start using lipids, which would be a less efficient way of making ATP. But the cell will start breaking down lipids to make ATP. It would slow down the production of ATP until the cell demanded we've got to have ATP, and then it would start burning those lipids to make more ATP. Much less efficient process, but you know, lipids are not storing it as well as the glucose is. And much less efficient than burning glucose, but it would be a last resort there. Start burning lipids. Okay, number one says write the balanced chemical equation for photosynthesis. The photosynthesis. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do subscripts here, but we'll give it a shot. Photosynthesis, we have carbon dioxide coming in. We have six of those, so we have six. CO. I'm not sure how to do subscripts. I'm just going to freehand my subscripts there. CO2s. We have six CO2s coming in. We 
And coming into photosynthesis, we also have to have water. We have to water our plants. We're going to need six of those. Six CO2s plus six H2Os. Plus, let's try it again. Plus sunlight. And sometimes it'll just be written over the arrow, sometimes it's just written as energy. The energy is sunlight coming in. Yields. C6H12O6, which is our glucose. Plus, given off by plants as a waste product of photosynthesis is something we need. It's our six O2s, our six oxygen molecules. So, six CO2s plus six H2Os plus sunlight yields C6H12. O six a six O twos. This one says how many hydrogen atoms on the reactant side will react. Our reactants are going to be over here on the left. These are our reactants. They're the ones going into the reaction. So how many hydrogens do we have over here? We have six H2O, so six times two. Two hydrogens in each of those water molecules times six molecules. Six times two would be 12 hydrogens on our reactant side. And this is which product is termed the byproduct or the waste product. Okay, given all, it would be a product. We have glucose, C6H12O6. That's our sugar molecule. That's what we wanted to make, so that's not a waste product. But we also have O2 being given off that the plant did not need. So that O2 being given off would be the waste product. So oxygen is the waste product. Which compound is the main product? That would be the glucose, the C6H12O6. The glucose molecule is the main product. That was the whole purpose of the plant doing cellular, I mean, doing photosynthesis. The whole purpose of that plant doing photosynthesis was to take that energy from the sunlight and capture it in that glucose molecule as chemical energy. So the plant could use it to make ATP metabolic energy. So the equation below represents what biological process? And here we have glucose, our C6H2O6, going into the reaction and with oxygen being broken down to make water and carbon dioxide and ATP energy. That should say plus ATP there. That was the main purpose of this whole process was plus ATP energy. And so this process would be cellular respiration. And it is the opposite of photosynthesis. So this is a photosynthesis. We have the light dependent reactions. And that's the, converting that sunlight to chemical. And then we have light independent reactions.